Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mo Jax, and today we are headed into the studio. We are looking at the advanced room correction system from IK Multimedia. Room correction was a concept I wasn't really familiar with until I reviewed the Adam Audio A7V studio monitors at the end of 2022. I don't cover much studio gear on this channel, I don't make music so it's not really my area, but I do produce the audio for these videos every week and as a DJ I really value having high quality transparent monitoring so studio monitors are the one area I do have a foot in. The better your monitoring is, the more you know what's going on within your blends and cuts and the better your overall sound will be. The idea of room correction is that you use a measurement microphone to determine the actual frequency response of your monitors, specifically in the space that you're using them, and then the software will create an EQ profile which will tailor the sound to create a truly flat output, or another profile of your choice, correcting for the room, hence the name. This can be a serious game changer if you're working in a space which has no acoustic treatment or not enough of it, or the room is strangely shaped, meaning that to acoustically treat it properly would be really difficult or incredibly expensive. The price of decent acoustic panels has gone through the roof in recent years. With the Adam Audio A series, I realised two things about room correction. Firstly, it is great and largely achieves what it promises to. By using the Sonarworks Sound ID reference system, I was able to create a truly flat profile for the A7Vs in the lab, export it to the monitors, and as long as I don't move them around, I know they'll continue to deliver that same flat sound consistently month after month. But I also used the Sonarwork system to create a profile for the Pioneer DJ monitors in my home studio, which is in the roof of my house. Correction is really needed in that room, and that's where the lack of a hardware solution began to irritate me somewhat. Sound ID reference seems to need updating endlessly, it regularly logs me out, and things just get fiddly when you try and use it either system-wide or as a plug-in. So much so that I've just given up using it there at this point. IK Multimedia have also been in the room correction game for a while, at least in software, with their advanced room correction system or ARC. Now, I haven't tested the software version, and it may be that it's much more reliable than the Sonarworks offering, I simply can't say having not used it. But my attention was definitely grabbed when they asked if I wanted to test their new hardware version, the ARC Studio. This is a hardware box which works in a similar way to how things do on those Adam monitors. You use a measurement mic to create a profile for your monitors, do whatever correction you like, then export the resulting profile to the hardware box. After that, it just sits there doing the correction without any software running or need to route through plugins. It's basically a very precise custom EQ box. But unlike the Adam audio system, you can use it with any speakers you like. One thing to make clear, which I was confused about initially myself, the Arc Studio does not replace your audio interface. Instead, it sits between your existing interface and your active monitors, or interface and amp if you're using passive speakers. The audio passes through the box and the correction is applied on the way. The hardware itself is great with reassuringly solid metal construction and a classy looking finish. Connections are fairly minimal but it has all you need with two pairs of balanced XLR sockets for input and output. There's an external power supply and a USB cable for connecting to your computer. This all means the unit is about as compact as it could be considering the size of the XLRs. It's just a little larger than my Native Instruments Complete Audio 2 interface seen here. Around the front there are two LEDs, one to show the unit is powered on and another to display the presence of an input signal or clipping. Then on the right there's an illuminated button to enable or bypass the stored correction profile. That's a true relay based hard bypass too, so when you disengage the correction the unit is entirely transparent within the signal chain. Not that it isn't transparent when it's active either, it has very high quality AD and DA conversion, 120 dBA dynamic range and ultra low THD and jitter. When I was running a correction profile which didn't actually change anything, there's no coloration of the sound to speak of at all. IK Multimedia claimed the system is zero latency and I had to test that, so I set up a recording with one channel going from my interface through the Arc Studio then back in, and the other channel looped straight back in uninterrupted but with a similar cable length. And there was a tiny bit of added latency there, but I do mean tiny, as in sub 1 millisecond. So for all intents and purposes, I will accept that zero latency figure. 
The system they sent me includes the DSP processor box and IK Multimedia's own measurement microphone, which seems to be very high quality. That package has a street price of $300 in the US, and if you already have a measurement mic, it's available without that for $50 less. Those prices feel like a bit of a steal to me, especially when compared to the Sonarworks offering, which is software only and costs around the same price. IK Multimedia also offer packages without the hardware, which are cheaper still, but I'm really only here for that box, to be honest. Of course, none of that matters if the actual performance isn't up to snuff, but there I found the Arc Studio to do a great job. You create the profile for your monitors and room by holding the measurement mic in various points around your listening position. The analysis software then plays a series of sounds, listens to the resulting output, and gives you a visual overview of the results. You can then apply a number of different sound profiles to that. I typically choose a flat response, but there are lots of other options, including simulations of other monitor types and even things like phones. Then you simply output the finished profile to the DSP box via USB and you're done. Of course, you can keep the box connected via that USB link and switch to different profiles on the fly if you wish. I was reassured to find that the Arc software gave me very similar results to those generated by SoundID Reference using the same monitors in the same position, and indeed because I was using the Atom Audio A7V monitors in the lab, I was able to easily A-B test between the Sonarworks profile embedded in the speakers and the profile stored in the Arc Studio system, which was great of course, but I couldn't wait to get the system back to my home studio where I have those non-Adam monitors and I got great results there too. As I said earlier on, I haven't played with IK Multimedia's software-only solution, and that may well indeed work better than Sonarworks has for me. But as far as I'm concerned, for the price they're asking for this hardware option, the Arc Studio package is absolutely the way to go for room correction. It keeps things simple and does the job asked of it without fuss. I really can't see myself going back to life in the studio without it now. So there you go, my thoughts on the Arc Studio or the Advanced Room Correction System from IK Multimedia. I've been a fan for quite some time now of Room Correction. I found it's made a big impact in my work as a DJ and in terms of producing these videos as well. What I'm never that happy with is doing it in software. It adds a layer of complexity, a layer of abstraction to what you're doing inside the computer. I much prefer it inside hardware as I did with the Adam Audio monitors. And so the same thing very much applies here with the Arc Studio. You bring it into hardware, I can do the calibration, export it and I know it's there, it's always going to work, I don't have to deal with a plugin or anything like that. So for me, that makes this hardware option a really good value choice. The hardware itself is great. Minimal latency, I can't really see any impact on the sound either. So yeah, overall I'm happy to recommend the Arc Studio. Let us know in the comments how you feel about room correction. Has it worked out nicely for you or would you rather invest in lots of acoustic panels and that kind of stuff actually treating your physical space? do sound off in those comments. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and you turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.